how's it going, guys? I'm Ben from Universal Audio, and welcome to another Luna Office Hours. However, this one is nothing like any of the other office hours that we've had so far. Uh, and why is that? Well, that's because it's not just me. It's not just the guys uh, we've been hanging out with uh, from Universal Audio. I've brought a couple of special guests along for an office hour. Please give a nice, warm round of applause in the live chat for Vance, Powell, and Dave Cobb. How's it going, guys? Hey, y'all. Uh, you, you guys are uh, glad to see everybody socially distancing here uh, correctly. What, uh, where are you guys calling in from? We we both in Nashville. We're probably a mile apart, but can't touch each other. So yeah, we're but we're. Oh, yeah. I would say yeah, mile or two apart. But yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I haven't actually, seen him in a year. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm uh, I'm at the studio. I've been uh, sort of uh, just kind of working here by myself, which is uh, awesome. And uh, just going home here, home here, you know, uh, I don't have any clients and it's, you know, the door's locked and it's just me. So, it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty much <laughs> extra, uh, extra quiet. Yeah. Nice. And uh, where, where are you at, David? It also looks, is I'm, this a home studio or? Yeah, a little home studio. Yeah, I'm yeah. losing it. I need, I need people around. <laughs> yeah. I, feel, I feel like I've, I could be calling from International Space Station right now. It's about the same thing, you know? Right. Well, uh, you know, the, that's actually, I'm kind of really enjoying doing all these office hours. It's, you know, I'm online basically 13 hours a day, uh, either on these calls or setting up to do more of these. And, uh, you know, everyone's like, man, that looks like a lot of work. And I'm like, yeah, it's a lot of work. But I'm also like just getting to nerd out with like all my friends across the world. Yeah, but Talk look at what you got in the room in the back of you there. Look at that. I know. What are you missing? You know, <laughs> massage chair? That's about it. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's coming next week. <laughs> 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 is that the next update of uh, the apollo it becomes a massage function? Uh -huh. integrated dsp yeah, yeah, uh, you know, yeah there you go <laughs> digital massage protocols uh yeah. but guys so you know the reason why we brought you on today is uh you know i think it was a couple of weeks ago we reached out to uh looking for some help in making sound examples pre-quarantine pre pre-quarantine we almost we yeah. almost were able to fly to nashville and film something all together uh but covid had other plans for us so uh, we reached out, you know, asking for help kind of, we wanted to demonstrate the, the, you know, the sound quality and the experience that Neve Summing has to offer inside of Luna. Uh, and who better to go to than like you guys and not in the rival sons, man, like it's the perfect, perfect way to kind of showcase how this, uh, how, just how much Neve rocks and that, what the kind of tone that that can add to a record. Um, so yeah, you guys were grateful enough. Uh, Dave, you produced the record, uh, and Vance, you were, uh, you were able to pull this up, bring it in. You know, we basically took a stems out of a raw stems out of Pro Tools, dropped them into Luna, and then you made a mix from there. I did. Nice. And so, uh, my, at my kitchen table. <laughs> on your kitchen table. My kitchen table in headphones. Nice. How was that experience for you, coming from what you're normally used to? Well, luckily, I had a really great set of headphones. I I was. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a set of these uh, Focal Listen mm -hmm. Clears. Yep. Uh, absolutely the most comfortable headphone I've ever worn in my life. And they sound unbelievable. They're so good. And so I, I uh, brought this in. Dave sent the files over on in Pro Tools. I opened it in Pro Tools, exported it in AAF. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then imported it right into Luna. And it just came up. All the files came up. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I just started kind of fooling with it from there nice and so dave uh you were there obviously for the for the whole tracking of this song uh let me actually let me share my screen before before we start playing some music for people let's show them what we're working with here um so this is this is the full session you got five tracks of drums two tracks of bass but this is uh vance doing a duplicate thing here and then was this like five guitars a solo 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 some two keyboard tracks and then uh looks like a vocal and acoustic or something like that you mind? Vocal, yeah that was cut live live yeah that's together yeah, yeah, singing and, and playing acoustic guitar at the same time nice so what uh where'd you guys track this at we did it in muscle shoals i mean muscle shoals is such an incredible studio and uh it's one of those places when we we're doing the album we cut the bulk of it at rc studio a in nashville which is a really magical place but we wanted to get some of the funk of of what was created in muscle shoals be it brown sugar or uh, or you know or all the soul records that were cut there so we we drove down and did did a couple of days of muscle shoals and the room really influenced the sound of this song i mean mm -hmm. it's it's 
pretty much exactly the way it was back in the 60s. So you know, it's a pretty tiny room and a really tiny drum booth, but it has such an impact. And uh, we actually recorded it really flat. This uh, engineer, Eddie Spear, recorded it. We recorded it totally flat because we didn't know what we were listening to in the control room. So we wanted to be safe. So mm-hmm. this is a really good example of what Vance did it with, with it. He, you know, he took a track that was really recorded essentially flat and really got a chance to kind of blow it up and make it exciting. So that's, that's what you're seeing right here. Nice. Cool. So yeah, let me, uh, let me just switch over to the mix view. So I'm just going to, let me play it a little bit from the top, uh, and let the people hear what we're working with here. So I'll play it through like the first course or so just to give them an idea. Uh, and I'll kind of scroll around through the window here as we're playing it back. So you guys can get an idea of what the session is. And then it'd be great to, uh, you know, do a couple of isolated before and afters, but also just talk uh, globally about how, how the mixing process was like inside of Luna. On the mountain where I was born, there are trees that would call my name. On the wind, they would bring a song for every feral to claim. They'd say, keep your eyes open. And we'll teach you to dream while you are awake. Well, they haven't spoken since their branches were broken for the fire that they told me to. that chorus explodes is crazy i love it a lot of that's the band the band just have i mean that's all live in a room together and you can the singer singing with the drums it just sound you know everybody's reacting to everybody but fans was able to take that and make it blow up even more you know mm-hmm. yeah so uh i think that's a good example and again you guys can hear this uh like if you go to the new summing page on universal audio uh, click on the sound examples. You'll hear a lot of these comparisons before and after. They'll be a little bit smoother than uh, me doing them live here in the moment. But let's uh, let's just hear what that chorus sounds like uh, with the new summing, and then I'll do a pass without it, so we can just hear back to back kind of what uh, what that's adding. <laughs> What a, that's a huge difference it's like night and day isn't it vance mm-hmm. what, what they say in decorating it tied the room together mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> very nice rug very exactly. nice. <laughs> the accent <laughs> accent wall yeah, yeah. The accent wall exactly yeah so vance what you know describe to people kind of what's your impression of what this is doing and, and changing in the mix well to me it just it just feels like it, the the mix goes from being sort of this nice thing like this you know Mm -hmm. to it just closes up a little bit you know and and that's that's part of the you know it's part of that neve thing too um uh, you know if you i I obviously put the neve summing on the master bus and then there's these other buses we'll get to in a bit but but uh you know i had to trim it down which is kind of what happens on a real neve desk Mm -hmm. when you start mixing and you're you know you you turn the master fader because on every neve desk the master fader goes from you know off to zero so i always end up it always ends up to me almost always my mix is somewhere between minus 10 and minus 15 something like that and that means i'm hitting that bus really hard and those transformers Mm -hmm. you know it's just it's just whatever's going on there is 
that thing where it just opens up. You know, maybe it's distortion. Maybe it's, you know, it's obviously harmonic distortion of some sort. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it just is great. Yeah. And uh, and I, I definitely felt like that, um, you know, this did what I expected it to do, which is actually kind of weird to say that something in the box did what I expected it to do <laughs> in a desk. But yeah. But that, I mean, the, the no more resounding of an endorsement right there, right? It's like it, it did what you expected it to, and that's that's always been the UAD way. Is even from like you mentioned, you pointed out the gain staging point of view of like if you're coming into this a little bit, you know, above that minus eighteen operating level area, like that's uh, that's where you're gonna start actually hearing some more of the crunch, and uh, or you're starting to hit the transistors and transformers uh, with a little bit more voltage. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Uh, and Dave, how about, you know, from the producer's point of view, what's, uh, what, what do you feel like this is delivering that, uh, you know, in terms of having with need something versus without? I think it's adding a puff. I, I know that's a weird way to sound. It's not really yeah. an EQ point on a, a thing, you know, that says puff, but mm -hmm. there's something that happens really great old vintage analog gear kind of gets poofy and it's not necessarily, sometimes it's not a hard impact and sometimes it's not a bright thing mm -hmm. but it's just, it's 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 something that kind of glues and that i think the summing has that glue and that's that's really something you can spend a lot of time trying to you know futz around with forever and add eqs and add extra compression and parallels to get that but yeah. i think you know in in pro tools uh, normally i think you you do a lot of things to try to bring color into it and this is kind of got one knob you just turn it and that's mm -hmm kind of saves a little time and also i think it does it, it's very reminiscent and really reminds me of a desk and that's exciting because i think prior pr sorry, prior to you know people mixing in the box i don't think people did as much parallel compression or did as much you know tricks on an old analog desk back in the 70s and clearly you don't really have to as much with with this summing inside a computer mm -hmm. which is really great yeah yeah, and that's that's kind of the idea. I've, I've been seeing lots of comments uh, from people. They're like, "Oh man, like L Luna has a sound to it, like and, you know, just like a desk would, right? You go to a studio and you're, you're getting that studio's sound built into everything that uh, that you do there. Luna has that same capability. You know, of course, you could not add these analog tools to it and get a very uh, transparent thing, but if you want to add just a little bit of extra sauce to it, that's kind of where the having Neve and having the Studer or Oxide tape. Uh, built in to the mixer engine uh, has a, just a huge advantage. Absolutely. We were we were talking about something the other day uh, with Vance as he was doing this. He was talking about the ability to use it where it really matters, and then some places where you want the opposite sound, you're able to not use it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of something you couldn't really do on a, a proper, you know, analog desk. You couldn't really choose whether you want to do this or not, which I think is really exciting. You know? Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't really have a lot of choices on a real desk. It's kind of okay. Here's here's what it sounds like. You know. Mm -hmm. and one of the great things about this is that obviously, uh, uh, if you're looking at the screen right now, you can see that every channel there's a there's a 1073. Now it's the I I, I kind of used the uh, the legacy ones, but but to be honest with you, I use the legacy ones. Uh, for multiple reasons. One, I turned the tracks down a little bit. If you mm -hmm. click around there, you'll see the track in certain spots is turned down a little bit. Yep. Um, and and by doing that, I basically lowered my level of the whole mix. It's a very common thing with a Neve desk. Also, I imparted the sound of the 1073s across the whole console. So like a console, yeah. they're they're everywhere on the on the console. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's the things I like. I mean, the, the cool part about this is that, you know, you could do this with, um, you know, I mean, you could have an API summing, you have an SSL summing, you could, you could have multiple things out there, uh, you know, if people were working on that mm -hmm. and, uh, and people could switch out and, and see. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a weirdo. I've got a SSL console right here, but I have API summing. So mm -hmm. that's because I, 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 mine's a 6,000. I didn't like the 6,000 summing. I really wanted something more open transformers, more all that. So, yeah. so I have a custom summing bus in mind. You could have that with Luna with a plugin. Yeah, be easy. absolutely. And what's really cool too, is like the controls that you're given on the Neve summing, uh, are very, 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 I was like, yeah, they're really helpful, right? Being able to have that headroom control and, you know, instead of having to like balance your gain stage in and well, out. The trim was awesome. The trim was awesome. And then uh, changing the impedance. Now, this is a nerdy, this gets into nerdiness with uh, 
uh, 1073s and, and 1272s and all these neat things. Uh, the high impedance normally is correct, but for some reason I liked the low impedance on the two bus mm -hmm. better. Let's uh, let's take this opportunity to hear to show people what that sounds like. Uh, there's so a gain, there's definitely a gain difference. A little bit of a gain. I'll try to compensate. I'll move the trim around to try to balance this out for everybody. So this is on low. This is this is Vance's setting as he liked it. for me yeah uh and you know so you get, switching over to that low one a you get the little bit of a gain bump yeah i'm hearing that uh just that, that low low mid kind of area feels a little bit more present on the low impedance yeah i mean yeah, most, most people that don't even exist on the back of the modules they're everywhere yeah. people never touch them <laughs> yeah right? you gotta pull them out and yeah. flip the module and put it back in so yeah <laughs> So yeah, it's, I'm glad that they brought that that to the to the front panel. And yeah, and I, and it, it was uh, I remember when you when you sent me the session to help do some of the captures and noticing the 1073 all across it. That was you know you answered my first question there of like uh, the legacy one. It's actually it's a great utility for that sense where like you don't need all of the extra DSP for the perfect modeling of it, but you're kind of using it just like you would on a console to help trim I, down. I, I use the I use the legacy one all the time in mixes because the EQ feels right to me mm -hmm. the the other one i i use it all the time too but i usually use it for other weird things like i put it in mic mode yeah and you know crunch right, the yeah. vocal with it and things like that mm -hmm. uh, but um for me the legacy one sounds really great and uh you know every now and then you get low on dsp and uh you can use the se one and it still sounds really good so yep. You know, it's a win-win for me. Oh, absolutely. One of the coolest things that I saw you did in this Vance is uh, you talked about it uh, on the phone a couple of days ago, the 3609 followed by the Oceanway Studio on the drum. Yeah. That was yeah. a really cool trick. Well, as, as, as Dave knows, and anybody who's ever been there, Muscle Shoals Sound is a, it's a um, former coffin factory. Now it sounds big, but it's not. It's a good, it's a good sounding coffin factory. It is, mind it really, you. <laughs> carpeted floor, what a vibe. carpeted walls, a drum booth. It's really very dead. Mm -hmm. it's a, it, it sounds like a '70s living room. It really does. Yeah. And uh, and this, the band, it, it felt to me like it needed to have some room. There were no there were no rooms because it, the the drums were in a booth, mm -hmm. and so you know like a a booth with glass. I mean the booth is tiny this tiny little booth and uh, so it needed some room so w over there on the left on the far left if you screen there mark if you scroll over there to the left mm -hmm. um, not that far left but uh there you go keep going scroll over I'm, uh, Yo, I'm, you put them there oh you moved them okay yeah. so so basically i usually do two things for the drums i i usually use the 33609 mm -hmm. I, I have one right there right in my analog world and i use a fat so and I have one right underneath it, again in analog. And these are parallel buses. They're they're all the drums, like all the drums, go to the three three six zero nine, and only, only, drums, actual drums like kick and snare and toms go to the fat zone. Gotcha. And if you hit play here in the bridge, you'll see what these are doing. Mm -hmm. Let me just solo. Then I'll explain the next part. Slow. Not the bridge, the chorus. Yep. So, so the fat so is kind of doing this, I call it a drum crush. Mm -hmm. And strangely on this track, it's not really actually hitting as hard as I would normally hit it, but, but it's fine. I, I turn the knobs until they sound good. So that's kind of how that worked. But I needed a little bit of room. So I used the compressed version of this into the ocean way in reverb mode, which mm -hmm. is basically, you know, that, that I'm adding this and then I, 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 turned it actually more wet than dry which is kind of weird and put it in the in the mix so you can you can hit play and kind of hear what's happening there yep
two that we sh we should show. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a track that was a malted when they recorded it that says snare EMI. Now there's a bunch of plugins on this, and this is a this is a little thing that I normally do uh, when I'm tracking, but I didn't track this, so I wanted to kind of tweak this and get this feel because this is like a really compressed snare track. And so what I, what I did was I figured out the tempo of the song. It's about 91 beats per minute. And then I used that tempo to basically kind of do this trip eighth note triplet on this, on this snare. So you can just solo that snare track mm -hmm. and, uh, going to know where I'm stealing that from. <laughs> Steely Dan, right? Is it Asia? Yeah. Yeah. I'm it. literally it. from <laughs> So um, obviously, you know, this is this is sort of a side swiping uh, when the levee breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, except on the levee breaks, it was a Benson Echo Rec. And then the famous, you know, hallway uh, stairs. Oh, the stairs. Yeah. But the tape echo is a big part of that. And so because this track was recorded, it's exactly the snare track, but it's just recorded with through an EMI compressor mm -hmm. of Dave. Yeah. Uh, I really like the way it sounded. So I just used it kind of as an effect. So when you put it all together, uh, and if you notice there, there's no EQ, there's no EQ on the overheads. There's no EQ on the kick drum. Well, there's a little bit. Uh, but there's a lot of EQ on the actual snare, and I said a lot. <laughs> yep, you're you're not joking. Wow. That that's a, a bunch of top, a lot of the top. top. It's really dark. Lots of and, bottom. <laughs> and 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 this is not anybody's fault. Mel Show Sound, it's it's now a museum, and the control room uh, is uh, absolutely unlistenable. You you really can't really hear anything in there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not very well, at least. And even the players back in the 70s, they said they would go out on the porch and listen from the porch next to the control room. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> it's just a very small room with a little glass, you know, aquarium. And but so the live room sounds amazing. <laughs> the live room is amazing. And yeah. you just don't use any EQ, yeah. which is what we yeah. have here. Yeah. So that's why, you know, I'm having to do all so much EQ here. But, but it's a testament to how great everything sounds in the room that I didn't actually have to gate this or do a bunch of stupid crap. Yeah. I just, I cranked up, you know, uh, 9 million DB of 10 K. <laughs> they sound good. So there yeah. you go. That's awesome. And, uh, let me show people a couple of tricks here as I'm sure you guys will appreciate this too. Uh, so now that I've got like a ton of windows open, there's actually a really, you, you know, you can either go through and, you know, click the X on all of them, but there's also a shortcut. If you just do shift W, can hide all your plug-in windows yeah, instantly look at that. get back to work in here and then hit shift w again and bring them right back so it's kind of a good way to keep working in uh you know i wish i would have known that <laughs> it helps you <laughs> this is uh man i've been, i've learned so many tips from doing these office hours uh this week uh I, that, that was one of the very first ones i was like oh yeah i need to definitely uh definitely need to get that one i, I think i think you need to have a new plug-in that just or a function that gives you like a self-help quote of the day if you press you know shift <laughs> h it goes you're great you know you're doing this awesome stuff, you're doing great this mix sounds amazing mm -hmm. you know what we should you should definitely you should it's like hey go outside take a five minute break come back in and it's gonna sound wonderful yeah <laughs> see no other dog has that right nope not yet <laughs> proprietary exactly and something else uh the, the kind of help clue everybody in about how these drums are routed. We, uh, we actually, this came up in an earlier session today, but as you'll see down here for all these drum tracks, notice how the output of them, instead of saying main, like the rest of these tracks do, they actually say multiple. And this is something that Luna lets you do is it allows you to route your, any tracks that you want out through multiple outputs. And it's super simple. You just press shift and select an output and it'll add it to the list and then you can shift and then you can come up here. And if you're like, Definitely don't want to be sending the drums to the chorus guitars. Just hit the X and that blasts out. Um, so this is, you can also kind of tell which ones I'm affecting by see the blue, that little blue highlight on the, uh, on the output there. That lets you know which ones are being affected at the moment. Um, so yeah, you can see Vance has got the drum comp room and the drum crush and, and these are also going to the main at the same time. So you're getting that fully, fully dry, you know, no compression, nothing else. And then you're able to then blend in 
uh, the drum crush as well as that yeah, compressed so, room. So, so just play the drums back without the two the two parallel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes from the, it sounds like a tight room. Without those, you get that really tight drums in a, in a like small room. Drum booth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, yeah, the, especially that room, the, the amount of space and depth that adds. And then the, the crush just comes in there and adds that last layer of, of, just makes it really intelligible, really easy to kind of break through the mix. Yeah. Great. That's great. So that that's a lot of fun stuff on the, on the drums. Now for the bass, um, you've got bass C2 and you've got bass amp. What uh? What you do here, man? I Vance? think C two just. I don't know what C two exactly meant, but I think that's just a di. Cool too. I don't know. What was it? I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Crazy too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and I just basically did a little bit of um on the bass amp. Mm -hmm. Um. That put the uh yeah the SVT. So that was basically it. Just a little bit of EQ. Uh. You know, between the two, one's a little more normal, and then one of them's a little more weird. You get that mid-range boost and, going. Uh, one, yeah, one of them, yeah, one of them's got a little more mid-range going. On. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first things you showed me, Vance, when we worked together when this plugin first came out. Is the the, the way you use LA two A after that? It just something about it just sticks. It sticks. Yeah, and, and, it and it's funny because Ben gave me a bunch of crap the last time we were together <laughs> about how uh, he didn't understand why I used this because it was so slow. And I was like, perfect, yeah, that's perfect. Exactly what I want it to be, mm -hmm. you know, but, but I guess it sort of comes from like, I want all those thumb transients. I want all that picking and all that stuff to pass. Mm -hmm. I just want the note to sort of be ridden around. Yeah. And that's why, yeah, it's slow. And that's why I like that one. That's the whole vibe. So yeah, let me, uh, let me play the bass here in that chorus and we'll <laughs> start with just the C2, which has got, it has the SVT on it, but with just normal kind of easy settings. Yeah. Yep. I think then... that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake. Oh, really? But, you, know. you want me to take it off? No. No. no leave it. Yeah, it's as is. All right. And then that's going into LA 2A. And then the other one is driving into the EQ SVT. And I'll add that one halfway yeah, through. Yeah. bigger and you know you can hear the finger you can you can hear what he's doing now yeah yeah it's actually not bass it's bobby mcferrin but it sounds yeah. like a bass yeah, yeah. I, you know i believe that there's a good quote for you don't worry be happy there's your first quote you <laughs> here we go in the help right in the help menu don't worry be happy <laughs> if you uh okay. everyone everyone in luna right now go hit the feedback button open it up yeah. be like positive uh, yeah affirmation it's, it's <laughs> exactly. <daily> affirmation. <laughs> yeah, yes exactly positive affirmations please <laughs> awesome. you know the, the cool thing would be is like if you just hit a button and a oblique strategy popped out right yeah. you know <laughs> Yeah, that'd be yeah. that'd be really cool. So then, uh, guitars. The thing is there's guitars. I mean, there's a overdub acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. the, the, a couple of these things are really cool because, like the the if I remember right, the twelve string and the electric. See how they're those are cross panned across each other. Those guys, all three of those. Mm -hmm. And that's just because I'm kind of like a, I kind of have this whole weird like I get hung up on the feng shui of 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 having things balance, mm -hmm. you know, like having whatever's happening. If there's something happening over here, it's cool. If there's nothing happening over here, but, but like at certain parts, I really want them to kind of have their own space. Yeah. So in the pre-chorus, they're back about eight bars. Yep. Um, that's where these two guitars come in and they, and they balance each other out really nice. Mm -hmm. And then kind of, and then you have the acoustic coming in, where the yeah. electric new is dropping out. So that's why you have those two are both yeah. panned to the left. Yep. That makes sense. Here, let me. It's my weird feng shui. Mm -hmm. uh... Those are beautiful sounds, man. Yeah. 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 
those were an overdubbed pair. And I, I wanted to kind of uh, let them, I, I wanted them to be processed together, even though they're probably just a, like played once and then played again. Yeah, uh, I totally. wanted to kind of process them together. So I put them in. Now there's a little trick going on here that, um, and this is a, a little fun thing here. Mm -hmm. If you notice on the Helios, mm -hmm. it's in mic mode. Yeah. So this is a preset of mine that's that uh, I believe is called Solo Guitar Helper. It's down there at the very bottom, that one right there. I only made one because, <laughs> you know, that's all you need. Uh, I wanted. I kind of like it for presets for me. I want it to be like, oh, here's that thing I'm going to use over and over again. Mm -hmm. And basically, what we're what I'm doing here is I'm I'm taking these tracks and blasting them into this uh, Helios at you know plus 20 over line, you know? Yep. And so you get this cool top end sheen that the Helios in overdrive, those germanium transistors. So yeah, check that out. Nice. And it has a then, thickness on the bottom too. Oh, that's, that's a something. Big effort. Yeah, that's that's something that that I think a lot of people are scared of, is that if you heard that sound going down before you put it with a band, you'd probably be a little frightened. Mm -hmm. But that's something that that bands and I do all the time is drive the pre's. It's such yeah. a huge part to getting those old records to sound like that. They all sound like they're on the verge of exploding, and that's the excitement when things sound a little bit scary. That's when it sounds good when you put it all together. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, I, yeah. Yeah, and what was recorded the original recording the, the track was driven good. It sounded good mm -hmm. you know I, I just wanted that little bit of extra little touch. spit mm -hmm. you know yeah, and yeah. actually this is this preset is a little it's a little bit away from my preset because i think i turned down the mid peak mm -hmm. like i think i had that up higher in my preset which on those helios man that's it that's the vibe yeah. right there that two two point eight Mm -hmm. yeah that's the helios magic yep. Yep. Really yeah really i pulled it i pulled it yeah, there you go yeah there you go that's your yeah. preset setting so yeah you had the you kind of <laughs> brought the mid peak back down and yep. changed the uh the bottom there and brought that fade up a yep. touch um but yeah dude this is again something coming uh coming from pro tools just uh always being afraid of making changes inside of plugins because you can't undo those changes it's such a relief to like be able to try a preset and be like, nope, that's not it. Or try a setting inside and be able to quickly undo it. I can't tell you the number of times I've just copied them, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. copied it down, drug it down, turned it off, noodled yep. with it, turned that off, went back to the other. Yeah. So, I mean, it's great. Yeah. And there's still stuff like, uh, you know, I was giving uh, Tom in our first session day some crap. Because uh, one of the other things that we're all used to is right clicking and having to solo safe everything. Uh, but I was like, dude, gave me crap about it too. Uh huh. Because because <laughs> you can unsolo safe and you know just on the chorus guitar. So if I solo that, it automatically knows. Okay, yeah. The tr what do you if you're soloing a bus? What do you most likely want to hear? Probably hearing the tracks that are feeding it, uh, and maybe any yeah. of the effects that are tied to it as well. Uh, so it's nice being able to have yeah, just be able to quickly hit solo and then everything happens. But the other cool one that we haven't really touched on in these streams yet, uh, but we did, I think we talked about this with Connor a while ago, is the spill button. When you hit spill, it automatically focuses either your timeline view uh, and then also your mixer view to just those tracks. So if you're... Oh, that's cool. So on those drum groups, if I hit spill on the drum comp, boom, I'm instantly seeing all the tracks that have anything to do with that uh, drum comp. That is such a great function because it's interesting... I, if, if you see a session that I've worked on myself, if I'm engineering, it's not much bigger than this because my brain can't handle it. I uh -huh. start to not be creative. So something like that allows you just to focus on that particular thing without seeing all the distractions off to the side. I think that's a great function. It's I'm it's super that. useful. And especially if you end up with like a big, say you have a, tra a session with 100 tracks, uh, some pop producer sent to you you know, what you can end up doing, you can kind of actually end up making it a little bit more manageable by grouping things together. And then you've just got like a drum subgroup, bass, synth, guitar, you can have each one of those. And then you come down to your main, you hit spill on your main, you would end up with just your groups that are feeding into the main. 
Um, so yeah, like right now it's, you're seeing mainly groups, but you're also seeing any of the tracks that are directly hitting the main bus are also still on screen. Um, right. so, yeah, before you know it, man, that spill thing becomes like second nature. You're just like, Oh, this is the Whatever. quickest, quickest way to focus in on what I want. Good for your brain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now the rest of this, there's a bunch of stuff in the solo going on. That's cool. Yeah. Let's uh, check that out. And the vocal, the vocal on this is a live vocal. I mean, it, it is a yeah. complete live vocal. Mm -hmm. There's a fun little, uh, scroll over a little bit to the right there. There's a fun edit in the drums. See the edit right there. Yep. That's because the drummer kept playing and he didn't mean to. And and he cursed. <laughs> <laughs> he he hit left it all in on the record. Yeah, it, it was supposed to be a hole, and so he, he yeah he he kind of uh, he hit it. And he goes Bruh! and then uh, is that so what he, he said? If you were to unsolo was that, if you were to unmute those and hit solo, you would definitely hear what he's saying there. <laughs> that shing ding ding fuck. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what he said. That's on the record. So yeah, if you want to hear that, yeah. listen to the record. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's well, a... Fender is vocal, so I mean, yeah. it was a deal where I was working on the balance of the band and had the vocal off. Mm -hmm. You know, I just had the vocal off, and I was like, oh, oh, there you go. Nice. Yeah. Right. So yeah, so the vocals. So when you guys cut this live, so it's drums, bass, acoustic, guitar. Yeah. Well, and... Yeah. Drums, bass, acoustic, guitar, and electric live. Mm -hmm. Yeah what it was and then obviously there's guitar overdubs to it and, and a mellotron and the mellotron, uh, and mellotron, and the mellotron thing was cool because i used the capital chambers mm -hmm. and you know like that you can't really go too wrong with them <laughs> right you know i put a little compression on on them which is just me kind of being nerdy and then uh capital chambers first and then i compressed it and then i did a little eq so it's kind of like backwards from probably how I would normally do it by putting the reverb on at the end. But this, I wanted to get as a sound, compress it, and then put a little EQ on it. Yeah, let's see what that sounds like. The sound, I love the sound. The, the, the chambers add to basically everything. You know, Mellotron's a really interesting thing. If you record Mellotron without some kind of reverb like this, it usually sounds hokey. But you you dip it in this stuff, and it just it, in the track, it sounds real every time. You know, it's mm -hmm. crazy. And I kind of thought like this was sort of like there's two Mellotrons, and to me, I don't know. I just was like, you know, they these should be hard panned. You know, they should be out on the side, mm -hmm. and then that will drive the chamber which kind of monos them in a way yep you know and then and then i just put a little bit of the reverb in and let them kind of but i want to kind of compress them and get them so they're, they're kind of in the mix and if you just play the chorus with the whole band you'll i mean you'll definitely you'll yeah. definitely hear it That's one of those elements that like, you know, it's then there underneath some of the guitar stuff, but then we take it away. You're like, wait, where'd the meat go? Where, what happened? I lost my, uh, I lost my stream from, from you, but oh. it's okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see if that works. They come back. No, but that's okay. I don't care. Yeah, you know, you remember how it all sounded. I know. <laughs> nice. Let's well, uh, cool. So that is some Mellotron stuff on the vocals. Again, it looks like you you went. You just check out the vocal. Check out the vocal. I mean, there's there's some cool stuff happening in the solo. There's some automation happening with the delays. Mm -hmm. There's automation happening kind of all over it. Um, I don't like to I don't like to go with a whole bunch of like ind I mean individual things. Mm -hmm. So there's only there's a vocal effects. And then there's that chamber with the Mellotron. So I kind of use both of those as the whole effects for the whole thing. Gotcha. You know? So, uh, but there in the solo, if you, you know, you can see uh, definitely in that third part there, you can see there's some automation there happening with the uh, reverbs. 
Mm -hmm. Well, and even even this one, you're, it looks like you're automating the uh, the mid gain on the EQ for that solo too. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yep. That's so, uh, what's the what's the idea behind that? Well, just to kind of make that as it's going to just just make it because it's kind of a deep, heavy sound, mm -hmm. but just to make it sort of come forward in the mix, you know, like the mid range part. So you know, play it, check it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it, it comes up to that to that break, you know. So that's awesome. Great. Yeah, and as you can, is the uh, how did you find automating in Luna overall? Were you mainly using it in right or like touch or latch mode, or were you kind of getting touch. there and drawing? Touch. 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 Yep. No, no, I don't draw. draw. <laughs> Only don't draw. But but I also I'm not also not a huge mouse fan so mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm a, I'm a trackball guy Dave's a mouse guy I'm yeah, a trackball guy the the and fences, you know yeah. to be honest with you both of them kind of suck honestly for writing automation so yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. neither one's great no. yeah but you can see yeah, I got lots of volume automation so you're doing these kind of I guess you're obviously then kind of doing it track by track and kind of just massaging yeah. everything as it needs so you can't touch them all at once mm -hmm. so. You know. Yeah. So what about? Yeah. So now uh, we got like ten minutes left here. So yeah, it would be cool to show people what you're doing on the vocals because you're yeah, sure. you're doing some cool parallel processing stuff here. Yeah. So this is kind of a very normal thing I do pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's exactly the same as what I have here, uh, what I use here, except that here I have a George Massenberg compressor. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is no sort of such thing as one of those in any of these. In anything. Uh, 8900. Uh -huh. uh, so I believe that what I used was the, um, I think it used uh, Fatso and the uh, Blues Trip. Yeah. So this, every time I mix something in Pro Tools and I'm on my desk, my vocal chain, my vocals go through this chain. Mm -hmm. And basically one of them is a clean and that's the blue. Mm -hmm. And then, which is a lot of people would say is not very clean, but uh, I, it is to me. And then the crush is the, um, the fatso. And what the fatso is doing is it's providing a lot of compression. It's providing a bunch of sort of DS based because it's a tape sort of idea. Mm -hmm. And then it's providing gain on the back side of vocals, where where the back side of a line, a singer hits the first part of the line great, he sings the second part of the line great, he's on the third part of the line, he hasn't breathed, you know, really got a breath or anything yet, and it'll start to fall off. The amount of compression will start to open up and push the vocal up. Mm. And it, it means that I have to do a lot less of this writing up and down because you get you're getting the end of the uh, some people automate those right they every end of the phrase are always pushing well, I, it up I, you have to still do that but mm -hmm. but this allows it to you know kind of do do it automatically and it. with a with a tone yeah, to it as well it's not just happening yeah you know. and it's the sound of the two so yeah, i think this uh this fat so is is one of the things you showed me years ago and i still think this may be the best you know in the box parallel for vocals period it's really it's amazing you put it on there and it just sits quick and easy so yep. mm -hmm. yeah let's uh let's hear what that vocal sounds like I'll, I'll play the verse for this part on the mountain where i was born there are trees that would call my name now without the crush on the wind they would bring a song for every fairly to claim mm -hmm. It say keep your eyes open. Now let's hear the chorus where he explodes. Feral roots calling me back home. Feral roots are calling me back home. Yeah, man, you can see those those meters are dancing perfectly with it, and you're right, that fatso it kind of has a natural deessing quality to it, which is uh, kind of yeah, it gives it a really great tone and really get good push up into it. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of one of those little tricks that um, I kind of landed on slightly on accident, mm -hmm. and slightly I stole it from somebody. So. <laughs> um, well, I stole it from I, you, so we're all good. <laughs> yeah, so sort of what ended up kind of happening was that um 
I saw it. Um, a friend of mine was mixing a track and he was using it as kind of a distortion effect. Mm -hmm. He had it cranked way up and he was using it just a little bit in the mix. And, and I was like, oh, well, that sounds pretty cool. So let's, so let me try it. And then I tried it, but I, um had it set completely different from his mm -hmm. from the way he had it and I, I i was like oh wow this is actually cool and then it sort of refined i refined it over time there's one other thing i didn't use on this mix that i will use sometimes and that is i'll use the the neve 1073 uad the silver one mm -hmm. and i'll put it in plus 35 Okay, so you and then turn the volume down, and it's the it's in the middle, so that it'll say mine would say L, uh, lead vocal crash, lead vocal distort, lead vocal clean, and then that one basically is panned up in the middle. These are all panned in the middle, but mm -hmm. they're all panned in the middle of a of a two channel thing on my console. Yep, and uh, so uh, not in stereo in mono always full mono. Yep, channels, and so I have one side's the fat so on my desk and the other side is the 1073 strangely sometimes sending effects from the fat so because of the compression mm -hmm. is cooler than sending it from the 1073 yeah because it's from a the, different the 1073, but from the 1176 mm -hmm. but then you start getting that distortion track in there and that adds this cool neve buzz you know to the track that is really awesome yeah oh totally and that, uh, and that, uh, that's one of the cool tricks. I'm not. Hopefully, everybody out there knows about this because we've already, you've already mentioned this trick twice. But uh, with UAD plugins, when you're using them as an insert, you can you have the option to put it in either line mode, which is the default, or switch it over to mic mode, which gives you those extra gain stages and lets you push them way beyond uh, what they what you would normally consider them using them for. Uh, but man, it, it really exposes the sound and the saturation that you get out of like the, something like a Helios or a Neve uh, preamp. Right. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's really great. And you know, and it, and it works. So, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the other thing is the, now you, you know, maybe, maybe you should show them how this works because there are some caveats to it. Yeah. Uh, one is. Turn your speakers you, down. Yeah. <laughs> step yeah, well, one. <laughs> yeah. Step one doing this a you got to know what you want to do to begin with so um yeah so when it comes up here first things first put the master fader down master fader yep all it. now you have to click you can't go any farther if you drag it it won't go so show them how to get it to 35 click right on it oh there you go mm -hmm. now uh what i do is i hit the eq button mm -hmm. And I take everything out under uh, 150. Okay, cool, great. Now hit play with the track that that vocal track soloed. Mm -hmm. Just bypass the 10, 10 there. Now just uh, bring up that slowly. Calling me back yeah. home. You go very fast, mm -hmm. or you're gonna have. Feral. Yeah, it adds like an extra bit of cry to it, so you can hear the breakup. There's urgency. this little buzz, and uh -huh. you know, it's just it's just a really nice sort of zizz to the to the track there. Yeah, uh, I've done this a whole lot. Um, this this we we did this with Jack White, that Consolers a Lonely record. His vocal comes back through a 1073 into a channel on the on the API mm -hmm. next to his clean vocal on the whole record. Wow, doing this. that's that's this that this sound is that vocal just yep. sneaking that blending it together with the dry. Yep, it absolutely is. There's wow. a there's a not not on this track, but there's a cool track on this record on Blunderbuss where there's this guitar solo that it shouldn't make any sense. Like I don't know how we got it. Mm -hmm. Except how we got it was we had done cello earlier in the day, and there was a microphone, the cello mic was in the room this booth where his amp was and uh josh smith my assistant went out and instead of putting the guitar mic on the guitar he put the cello mic on and so it was going to helios mic pre which i believe we bought from mm -hmm. dave cobb yeah. <laughs> and then but that was kind of, then i patched it on accident into the mic pre on the console so when i turned it up a i thought it was a 57 
I forgot it was going to the Helios <laughs> and I turned it up like, like maybe, you know, that far. Uh-huh. And then sound came out and it was because it was a ribbon mic into the Helios cranked way up. And then into the mic pre of the 10 to 73 cranked up pretty, you mic know, pre like and the mic pre both. and it was, you know, it was like this glorious transistor distortion uh-huh. of a microphone signal from a guitar amp. And uh, I mean, when I turned it up that much, Jack was like, wow, that's cool. Let's record that. I was like, all right, done. Done. <laughs> I, and I look like I a meant genius. to do that. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I look like a genius, <laughs> even though it was 100 percent a mistake. <laughs> Those are the that's what you love, right? Happy accidents, just like that one. Happy accidents, really, really cool. That's awesome. Well, uh, the last thing I'd love to touch on uh, while you guys are here is uh, the two bus processing oh, yeah. that you did. Uh, so obviously, you know, the new summing, the, the whole reason we sh- were here today is to kind of, sh- we showed off the new summing earlier in the broadcast, but after that, uh, you've got some stuff that I think is emulating what you typically do in the real world, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, um, I, I mean, I'm looking at my ATR 104 right there mm-hmm. and then right here is my, uh, 2,500, my API 2,500 right yep. there. And, and actually, uh, that AT, my, the, uh, 2,500 is my preset that's in all the UA. And that's pretty much exactly what mine's set at now, except for the release time. That's the only thing I ever really change and the threshold. Yep. And then, um, I, but on this, I'm actually sort of using the tape because I love this uh, 250, Scotch 250 um, tape. I have tons of it back here on my back wall. You can't see, I use it all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's what's on my machine right now. And I just use this for the final sort of color of the track. Since it's recorded in Pro Tools, I just wanted to put a little bit of tape on it. Now, I tried playing around with putting tape using the ATR or Oxide, Mm -hmm. and it didn't quite work to me right in the mix, but the ATR here on the two mix worked exactly like I wanted it. And then um, we used the Fab Filter there at the end to just make it, you know, to get it up to Andrew Shep's level. <laughs> yep. Just a little, that last little, last little push. <laughs> so with the, with these, uh, with the 25, the 2,500 settings are, this is the one that, uh, I think is the most important for people to really, you know, grasp what you're doing here. So the threshold you're kind of setting, you're basically looking for just the right amount of meter movement. Is that basically how you're doing it? Pretty much. Mm-hmm. And so attack, leaving that kind of open so you get lots of transients. Uh, attack is always, mine is always right there. Always on 10. Mm-hmm. Always on 10. Release, you always keep on that point 0.1 as well? I, I tweak, no, no, no. That's to taste, tempo. Okay. It's tempo based. Yep. The, the really important button on this 2500 is the gain button. Really? Why's that? Yeah, because the gain button, the way this was designed, it had auto makeup gain. Mm-hmm. And that weirds me out. <laughs> Machines thinking for you. I don't like it. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I was never a fan of it. But you hit the non makeup gain, then I can add gain if I or take it. I can't really take it away, but I can add it if I want. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense to me. Yep. It also changes the threshold, so it's they're tied together. That's mm-hmm. a Paul Wolf question. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> the man who the man who knows knows best. Yeah. And then uh, obviously they're in the shape. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm, I've got the high pass, you know, rolled off. Yeah. So that the low end doesn't trigger the compressor. Oh, I see. Yep. So that way, oh, okay. I, I actually, I've, I always forget that this is here to be able to kind of roll off that bottom. Yeah. Just, it's just to the detector. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that yeah. way it's just and not listening to as much that, of the kick. It allows that kick drum to punch through, mm-hmm. the low end to punch through the compressor without triggering it too much. And what no, about, we, I'm kind of using the ATR also, by the way, mm-hmm. for meters. Because I mix on a console, so I mix on meters. I know where I want those meters to be, mm-hmm. you know, every time I'm mixing. Yeah, that's If important. they don't move enough, you know, I've got too much compression. If they're doing this all over the place, I don't have enough, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's not so much about where they're landing, but it's the, the amount of motion and, and how they're I kind like of... To, I like to put the mix between the threes. Mm-hmm. There you, know, you go. Plus three and minus three. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in there. And, and that way, like that way, I know that if I print this mix uh, without that heater plug in that without that limiter, mm-hmm. I can print this mix and send it to a great mastering guy like our buddy Pete Lyman. Yep. And and he would get it and he has tons of room 
to work with. Yep. He can turn it up, way up. He can turn it down. Mm-hmm. He can do whatever he wants. I'm not limiting him, limiting him, <laughs> literally, to what I give him. Yeah. And and you know that's the relationship with the monitor with the with the with the mastering engineer. Mm-hmm. You know, so some people don't do that, and that's fine. It's totally fine. Your your mileage may vary. Objects in the mirror appear larger than. <laughs> right the uh let's hear let's hear this once uh with and without i'll i'll do i'll leave one on and turn the other off and that way that people can really hear uh what each of these whatever, are adding to the you mix do. you're the master of your domain <laughs> doesn't it it does it was like the 102 here is it's adding just that little touch of polish just that it gives a little extra little bit of sheen right just a little something when when will shanks and the guys were first talking about the the uh 800 Mm -hmm. and they were talking about tape formulations i i made it a point to to tell will like please go find yourself a roll of scotch 250 um and and he did he found some new old stock and and i love the fact that they they basically put it in the in the mix because it's a tape that has not been on our planet since about 1992 91 <laughs> something like that oh, wow. but it was such a really great really great tape an amazing formulation and it just really sounded great i luckily have a bunch of it still uh from the 80s mm-hmm. i had new old stock half inch from the 80s that's sealed and that's good because moisture is what, what you know it. what kills it mm-hmm. a lot and of whales died for that tape right a lot of whales and then, then they make it out of whale blubber uh, probably so <laughs> I, I actually i think i think and i'm not sure but i believe it had benzene in it mm. and that's super carcinogenic so yeah you don't want to touch that too much you know but nope. I mean, not like it's you know, like touching it's going to be fine. Mm-hmm. It's when it breaks down, like in a landfill, mm-hmm. that's when it gets bad. That's so, bad news. Yeah. Nice. But uh, man, it sounds good. Yeah. Still, it to this day, it's it's my favorite. Yeah, man, it's such a cool movie. Yeah, and then the 2500 on there. That's re- to me that was adding a lot of the that final bit of a push, that final like little, almost like a bit of aggression to it, while yep. kind of gluing the whole thing together with with a bit of an attitude. You can make it even more aggressive by hitting the hard button. Mm -hmm. That gets a little more. And then the tone to loud, that gets a little more. I'm, I sort of want that, that, that I just kind of want something in the middle of all that. Mm -hmm. And then the new old button basically is like a feedback compressor versus feed forward. It's a little bit like the new is like an SSL and the old is like a, like a Neve. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's, it's all, smart smart controls that sound great on this box yeah Um, so it makes it such a versatile box and uh something else that hopefully people you know if you're familiar with uad plugins you'll notice you know having the headroom control for the neve summing uh it's a very handy control and that's why it's one of the most prominent ones uh but stuff like the fairchild and the 2500 and the the very mu these also have headroom controls uh, so if you if you ever find yourself you know with your threshold at plus ten and you're still hitting it too hard, uh, you can always come in here and use the headroom control to kind of open up the uh, what's it basically is moving its sweet spot upwards or downwards for you. Or or you could do the proper thing and just set your your gain stage correct. Yeah, exactly. Do that. Why would we do that? Why would you want? Yeah, yeah, come on. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Everything louder all the time. Always. Uh, yeah, and this is, that was something that Fab brought up uh, yesterday as well that he loves about having the Neve summing is like, yeah, it sounds good. Uh, you know, the, you can't argue with how it sounds, but even cooler is that the fact that you now have actual VU meters with ballistics that were modeled off of Neve console ballistics. So you're. Yeah, I wish, I wish they were stereo meters. Mm-hmm. Hey, I wish they were stereo meters, guys. 
That would be awesome. Cough, cough, cough. Wink, wink. Oh, Hit God. the feedback, my <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, guys, man, this has been. Uh, thank you so much for a sharing the song, sharing your talents and time, yeah. and then kind of walking thank us God. through this. And uh, you know, this is really this is super fun. I think to share with people and show them that like uh, just how Luna kind of all comes together and and works as a uh, as a complete mixing and recording system. So yeah, any uh, anything that I didn't touch on that you guys wanted to to tell people? Dave, no, it's it's fun because uh, you know I, I mixed it this song for the record and I mixed it on a laptop, but I didn't have need some of the times. So it's really interesting to hear it kind of go oof, and get that thing. You know, you re- it's really hard to pull off mm-hmm. inside inside a computer, and I think you guys have done a really good job doing that. You know, awesome. yeah, yeah, I, I thought it was really great. I mean, you know the the funny thing is there's i have so many years of muscle memory and all and and the key commands a lot of the key commands are the same Mm -hmm. um and that helped uh but uh there also you know i mean you guys know this was a couple weeks back that i was working on this you know there wasn't really a manual or anything so i had to kind of figure the whole thing out myself Uh and i i've been seeing this you know for about a year a little bit one of the few people has seen it but not really stuck my head into it and uh, I basically did all this from about three in the afternoon to about five or six in the evening on headphones on, on my kitchen table on this laptop, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean, uh, that's pretty awesome. Now I did have a bunch of, I, I have a twin and a satellite and an 8P. So I had processing Apple. I just listened on my twin in headphones. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I, did that and the crazy thing was i i put it up to dropbox um uh, and then i came here and i opened it here from dropbox don't do that by the way but i did and it opened and i hit play and i was i was like oh there it is well uh, i don't um okay yeah there's some rides that need to happen i knew that though Mm -hmm. and so i spent about another hour or so literally after after a session one evening after a mix one evening Mm -hmm. i spent about an hour here and then i sent it to dave and he was like hey do this try this and i did that but we were both like yeah that's yeah done you know yeah so yeah that's really cool yeah and all in i think all in i i spent maybe probably an hour figuring out how it worked Mm -hmm. and then uh which is pretty darn good pretty fast yep and um you know get transferring the files getting the files in all that and then i probably spent four hours or so uh tweaking it Mm -hmm. and that was it that's it so wow that's uh good as as people have said if if it's good it's good so you know i think it's pretty good nice well in uh, advance you you inadvertently just answered the most asked question uh that apparently has come up in the chat which was uh what rig were you using to do this so twin satellite and the x8p a twin x mm-hmm. twin x an 8p yep. x i think the black one whatever mm-hmm. and then a, a octo satellite nice so easy peasy yeah i mean re- relatively easy yeah. on my kitchen table exactly it all fits on the I table i don't think it, yeah i don't think a neve console would fit on your kitchen table would it yeah no, no not really. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really you can't really travel you can't fly with one of those <laughs> awesome yeah it gets a little gets a little hard to uh yeah exactly so nice well, guys, yeah. this uh, the song sounds amazing. Like I said, thank you so much for sharing it with me uh, and with everybody here. Uh, the, all the everybody in the chat. We actually this is one of the quietest chats that we've had so far because everyone was just so enthralled with what we were showing off here and how good it sounds. So the just wanted to make sure you guys knew that everyone's really enjoying what they're hearing and uh, and being able to kind of show some of these cool tricks that you were pulling off in here, Vance, was super special. Oh, well, thanks. Well, you know, you know, uh, if if uh, Dave and I can baffle people with BS, we'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first sober chat we've done this week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. we we had yeah. another chat earlier this week on Pure Mix, and uh, yeah, that didn't. That was uh, that was a little more drunk. The like, bullshit gets a lot better when when there's alcohol involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the middle of the day drinking. You know, yeah. I'm I'm having coffee right now, but. Uh, middle of the day drinking uh talking with reed shipping and and reed and I, or and dave and i so yeah that's I, I checked in on that one too though it looked like you guys were having a lot of fun we're having a lot of fun so we're gonna do that every week on tuesday awesome so, yeah fantastic well guys thank you so much for uh spending some time thank with us all. here this afternoon thanks 
And uh, thanks for doing all the good work, you kids. Oh, thanks, yeah, thank Bill. Yeah, thanks, thank Bill, for you know making things happen. Absolutely. Thanks for our good friend Erica. Thanks to Will, mm-hmm. Lev, yep. Kicked Ass, yep. Dave. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Do the good work. You're doing it. <laughs> awesome. Thank all you so right, much, guys. guys. Yeah, we'll see you. Safe, right? See you soon. Yeah. Yep. Right. See you.